Oh, help everyone, my channel's under attack! You can see my most recent Rings of Power video is being review bombed! I can hardly stand it or really care all that much for being completely honest because last time we were doing this stuff we were taking a look at this very article right here i'll just go back to my oh no not that one that's for my other channel if you want to subscribe to that one feel free to go right ahead but no 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 we talked about this little ditty right here from the hollywood reporter yesterday and hell i wasn't even really all that uh, convinced I wanted to do a Rings of Power video today. I was mostly just, you know, thinking that I'll probably wait until the end of the week, see if there's any more nonsense to pop up when it really comes down to all this stuff. But lo and behold, I guess, uh, you know what, with the long weekend around, it took just a little while for all the bots to be activated on social media and then from the review sites. And oh boy, they decided to really ratchet up the t terrible content that's out there okay and unlike those other sites okay youtube doing youtube things aside okay i'm not getting rid of any of the comments not getting rid of any of the negative feedback on the channel because hey guess what uh, any feedback is fucking positive feedback on youtube so thanks for the interaction you fucking spurgs but Hey man, I'm seeing a, there's a lot, like I said in the first video that I did right there, okay, there's going to be a lot of money in this pie right here, a lot of people are making content on it, and I've always maintained the position that this is never, I'm not going to be reviewing any of this shit, I'm just taking a look at the outrage that's out there right now, when media is obviously telling the people who is watching this stuff that no, 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 it's good, and if you don't like it, you're just a, the fucking racist instead of people just... No, I'm watching this, and what I'm seeing on the screen isn't indicative of the source material. I know, it, that's not the character that I know, but you're telling me that's the character? Oh, so, so you guys are just lying to me, so what else are you lying about? That's the type of reaction that I want to cover, okay? That's, that's my in on this type of stuff, okay? Like a lot of people, when it comes to Andrew Tate, they want to talk about oh, his deplatforming. I don't really know what he's about. I hear that he's a misogynist and that he's also a, a being investigated for being a human sex trafficker, all of which is fucking nonsense. I've done a fair few videos on that as well. And oh yeah, those are also getting review bombed as well because, oh no, guess what? I invoked the name of H3H3. <gasps> oh, but again, thanks for all the interaction on that. And I don't really care about that. If anything ever pops up on that, oh yeah, I'll be talking about that as well because I actually like and listen to Andrew Tate. Go fucking figure. But speaking of figuring, Oh, we've got some uh, crazy insight, again, from The Hollywood Reporter. Just to refresh everybody's memory, what we were talking about yesterday, see if there's going to be a consistent through line when we get to the rest of this response, okay? Uh... What the discourse over Rings of Power has made clear that we're living with a rationalization of racism. Huh? No, the, the CGI kind of looks like a video game. The characters is wooden as the rest of the sets and uh the story is fucking dull okay and you put this out hours from the release so you clearly had all of your sources cited beforehand because you knew how bad this was going to be so instead of fixing the product because this is the hollywood reporter okay this is one of the respected trade papers in Hollywood. So again, they had the inside track when it comes to all this stuff. So they could have been having these discussions in order to fix this fucking lackadaisical product. But you didn't. No, no, no. You just decided to get some clicks off of that. So whatever. Okay. People who consistently consume corporate media to give their little smooth brains some character mm, while boasting profile pictures from popular IPs. Hmm. Well, guess what, stupid? I made my own content, or I made my own profile picture, okay? And I put my own fucking picture on the screen as well, like me. You can see in the whatever this this screen right here but i understand okay that that's fine okay but if you're taking a look and you're trying to incite to the people on social media and you're just trying to say that no you guys just hide behind uh your avatars oh, okay cool uh, the exact same thing happens completely at the same degree if not worse most of the time on the other side okay because on social media you know that a terrible fucking tape take is going to come from somebody who has a ukraine flag in their bio okay has profile or pronouns somewhere in the close vicinity or 
is making these awful takes from behind an anime avatar. So let's just fucking call a spade a spade here. But it's also like those, if I'm to just steal a phrase from here, some of the smooth brains that are out here, well, it happens on both sides of the aisle. Very minuscule, okay? The outliers you can point to on one side, whereas the overwhelming majority on the other. It's almost like, I don't know, we can't really put our tinfoil hats on completely, but you can just kind of set them on top. Just kind of have like a tinfoil yarmulke, perhaps, okay? Maybe because they're so few and far between on one side, ah, would you think in order to spurn that whole, well, both sides are being awful talking point, one of the other side would just go over there and fucking make some side of or make some sort of a stupid post because he I haven't specifically seen anything I don't like Lord of Rings Rings of Power because there's black people in it I haven't seen that but I guess this person has because they just can't go anywhere okay they live in the world that is colored by the words of Anita Sarkeesian yes pulling out all of the old references because again we're citing a material that was also crafted in the 30s 40s and 50s so okay yeah no not quite that old okay even though I don't know how old uh, Sarkeesian is, but her ideas are from that area, that era as well, okay? Everything is racist, everything is sexist, and you need to point it out. This is the way that the corporate shills color themselves in the world. And they live in these little hug boxes online that fester and promote these ideas as well. So that's what ends up writing this type of stuff. But anyways, blah, 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 are now crying that fans of Rings of Power, where are they? Because I know, what, 25, 25 million people watched this on its first day. Haven't seen any viewing figures after the fact, and uh, I'll be waited with bated breath for the third episode when it drops next Thursday. I'm sure they're just going to have that right out there on Front Street. Broke second week viewing figure records. What exactly is that record that they broke? Don't know. How many people tuned in? Don't care. All right, cool. Just wait. Just wait for that. Anyway, so-called Tolkien purists are using Jackson's film as armor to support all white casting, despite the fact that Jackson and the co Writers Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens made many significant changes to Tolkien's novels when adapting the film. Uh, most of the purists were pointing that out at the time, okay? Like at the end of the third film, okay? There's supposed to be a big scouring of the Shire, okay? There's supposed to be a big battle right there. But that would have made Return of the King a four-hour four hour film instead of a three-and-a-half one. But that was, yes, some studio meddling. And then also not having Tom Bombadil in a part of the Fellowship during the time. Yeah, that was also some things that people were pointing out as well and a couple of other changes along the way. But that withstanding, okay... That just goes to show you that immediately people were pointing and picking out little nits. But those people that were doing that still hold that Jackson trilogy up as the masterpiece that it actually is. So your ar your arguments kind of fall apart right here. Because again, people would like this if it wasn't dog shit. But yes, including playing with the timeline and adding new characters just like Rings of Power. Just like Rings of Power, right? It's like that Office US meme where somebody brings two pictures and it's like, can you tell the difference between the Peter Jackson movies and the, uh, the Rings of Power? It's I, I can't see a goddamn difference right here. And of course, they, uh, there's the tried and true argument people of color should make their own stories instead of inserting themselves in existing words or worlds. Um, I think, okay, anybody who's still making that claim in today's advanced day and age when it comes to media, uh, you've already lost that ground a long fucking time ago. Trot out a new talking point, okay? But again, it never works the other way, okay? Whenever they do the uh, George Floyd documentary, I can't wait. I cannot wait for Tom Hanks to be playing the, the role of venerated George Floyd. Nobody should be having a problem with that, okay? Make your own movie if you want to have different casting. Uh, which, again, presumes that they don't already exist within those worlds and that they would support those stories if we did. But my favorite, which has been a spat, or has been spat at me numerous times if these projects weren't trying to force diversity and wokeness, then these actors wouldn't have to deal with racism. Really, there's the, oh, they're the ones being used. And all Ultimately, because again, that actually is kind of a ham-fisted way of making that point. But okay, you've erected the straw man out in the field. I want to see how you miss with your kung fu kick here. If you didn't exist, if you didn't have the skin you had, you wouldn't have to suffer abuses. Oh my god. And again, what's all the criticism that we've seen when we went through it all yesterday? 
oh yeah most of this shit uh it's just bland oh you hate it because there's blacks and it's like oh okay cool but no 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 that was the take from yes the hollywood reporter here yeah uh, yes uh richard newby you do good work my guy but again <laughs> no no you ain't got a fucking stitch on the great adrian harrington who says that amazon's rings of power is not for purists or racists Oh, okay, cool. So it was alluded to in the Hollywood Reporter article. Okay, and, and for purists, you might not like it, but then again, you probably didn't like the Peter Jackson. Oh no, and if he did, that means that you're clearly a racist because he, he fiddled around with the casting. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. So yeah, no, okay. So it's weird. They're kind of salting the earth here with this headline, okay? The Haretz and Adrian Hennigan, right? Okay. Amazon's The Rings of Power is not for purists or racists. Okay. Okay, cool. So it's for who exactly are you going to posit that? Okay. And then also tying together the people who enjoyed the source material with racists. Hmm. That's not exactly a winning proposition. Okay. It's just interesting for me because that's also another talking point that's out there quite a bit. <laughs> um, excuse me. We're only two episodes into this. So you can't be judging the entire work. Okay. You can't say that it's all worthless. So what if by the end of this series, or if for whatever reason, episode three is well received and loved out there does that still make okay uh, does that end up making the rings of power inherently racist and if they course correct and actually make a more true to form story does that immediately make it bad so then you guys wouldn't like it like uh, again this is some big thing concepts right here let's see if he can go ahead and nail this out I suspect a lot of families are going to be paraphrasing Martin Brody at the end of episode 2 of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, by declaring, we're going to need a bigger television. Ah, yes, Jaws, a good Jaws reference, very timely reference you have right there. That's because Prime Video's new J.R.R. Tolkien adaptation. What source material is you adapting, by the way? Oh, I shouldn't ask that. That's a racist question, right? Uh, is a, such a grand, lavish production that it simply must be seen on the biggest and best of screens, and most certainly not on a smartphone. I've spent the past couple of years debating whether to get a new TV. My, I don't care, dude. Like, for fuck's sakes, okay? A good film is going to be a good film regardless of the fucking medium that you consume it on, Okay. Judas Priest's Painkiller, for my money, is one of my favorite albums. It doesn't matter what set of headphones, it doesn't matter what stereo system I listen to it, okay? All Guns Blazing is still gonna fucking rock everybody in the fucking neighborhood socks off. And Between the Hammer and the Anvil is still gonna remain one of the most underrated metal tunes of all fucking time. Regardless if I'm blaring it through my sound system that I have here, or if I'm rocking it in my vehicle. But the long and short of it is, okay, it, it looks like this series would be more appropriate if you were watching on a, watching it on a smartphone while evacuating your bowels but to each their own i suppose of course the show's grandness begs the question of whether something so cinematic could really be told on the small screen okay cool so this film isn't for people who like to watch it on the tv isn't for people who like the source material and it isn't for racists so people who watch and consume media on their phone are also racists. Oh, okay, cool. So everybody on Earth is now racist. The Anita Sarkeesian prophecy has come true. Uh, when are we actually going to get into all of this fucking proper stuff? Because there's a lot of waffling up front. Uh, the fact that Amazon uh, plans to tell the story uh, in over four or 50 hours. Yeah, they're supposed to be. 50 episodes over, they say five years, supposed to be five seasons, but again, there's going to be a two-year break until the second season comes out, and there's only going to be eight episodes in the first fucking season. So again, this is going to take a long fucking time, and it's going to be a little bit of a bitch, okay? Because you're supposed to have these ethereal creatures, like elves and dwarves, that don't age or anything like that, but you can really get away with the dwarves on that one, who, even the female dwarves, and that kind of contradicts the source material, even the uh, Jackson films, and the Hobbit films as well, that female dwarves have beards, but I guess if you're a black dwarf, then you don't have a beard. Okay, whatever, fine, that's fantastic. But how is Moifred Clark supposed to maintain her looks today all the way over the next at least a half to all the way to a full fucking decade 
Make that make sense. And if you thought Peter Jackson took his own sweet time getting to Mount Doom in his movie trilogy, which took up most of my 30s, even though they were filmed back to back to back, but hey man, whatever, dude. And they were, again, this shit is making no goddamn sense. What, are, are, you gonna refil, are you gonna review the show or are you just gonna continue to tell your own personal stories? Like, okay, all of which is fine. You just set it up that this isn't for anybody who reads the source material. It's only for clan members, okay? Uh, this is also clearly a labor of love for Amazon. No, it's not. They spent a lot of money. And again, more criticisms of this. It lacks fucking soul. Whatever that means. This is the kind of money at stake. Uh, $50 million per episode. And boy, doesn't it show. Uh, it's easy to imagine Jeff Bezos clutching a series script, tightly and maniacally murmuring precious to himself. Get it? That's a reference to the movies that are not canon and not good because Peter Jackson changed some things, just like Lord of the Rings, uh, the Rings of Power, right? But again, Jeff Bezos stepped down from being CEO of Amazon a while back. So why would he care about this? Just saying. In rare public appearance, Amazon's head honcho. Again, he's not affiliated with Amazon anymore. He's, it's not his position. Revealed at the show's UK premiere last week upon hearing that Amazon had bought the rights, one of his sons said to him, Dad, please don't F this up. And then he did. So the Holy Scripture. Okay, looks like we're finally going to get into this. Some folks regard Tolkien's work as Holy Scripture. No, it's just like study and well venerated and there's a, such a fandom right here that it rivals there's nothing even fucking close let's be completely honest okay you have the old animated skits from back in the 70s uh and then yes the 2000s movie trilogy and then to a lesser extent the hobbit films which are going to be getting the prequel star wars prequel treatment here in the very near future that oh we were a little bit too hard on you guys but yeah it's held up and put on a pedestal because maybe it is that good i don't know I haven't read the books or anything like that but I've always been somewhat immune to the 20th century English writer's charms. Oh, this guy's above it all. Mm, yes, I just review things not based on my feelings, just how good something is. Honestly, being forced to read The Hobbit as a youngster put me off all novel all novels for about a decade. Yeah, that was a, a, an adaptation, a collection of bedtime stories that uh, Professor Tolkien would tell his kids. So yeah, I understand if you were a kid of a certain age, okay, if you were in your teens, if you were angsty about all that shit when you read The Hobbit, it wouldn't resonate with you. I understand. So, the only thing I really liked about Tolkien was the fact that Led Zeppelin albums... Oh, see, this guy likes current thing. How fantastic. What's his favorite Led Zeppelin song? It's Stairway to Heaven, I bet. Uh, would have been a whole lot shorter without his books providing such an unlikely source of inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that's another reason why, you know, I understand the reverence afforded to the work of Tolkien because he has influenced many a metal album before, okay? There's... Demons and Wizards, okay? Fantastic fantasy metal as well, okay? Not just simply influencing some Zeppelin albums as well, like, for fuck's sakes. And I'm not even that big of a fan. Well, it's not impossible not to be swept in the majesty of Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy or the Hobbit trilogy left me at, or rather cold. Just get to the fucking, just get to the racism part. Okay, this gives a little bit more context as to where this guy's coming from. Uh, spoilers, the closet. Uh, part of me would have loved it if Amazon had gone, or had done a George R.R. R. Martin and sexed up Middle Earth a little. Oh, okay, cool. Instead of, you know, using the highly regarded source material, you want to use the derivative work in order to influence stuff, okay? That's like, use a video game reference here, Uncharted taking what Tomb Raider did, only for Tomb Raider to later co-op the advances made by Uncharted and then just kind of drive that franchise off a cliff. But then, you know what, hey, a cruel twist of irony, okay? And Uncharted ended up going off a cliff at the end of Uncharted 4, thanks to Neil Cuckman. I liked that series of games for a while. But Uncharted 4, ugh, God, that was one of those first games that came out there. It's like, why is a black lady just constantly beating the fuck out of uh, Nathan Drake? This don't make a whole lot of sense. Anyways, and it has nothing to do with her being black, by the way. Chloe in um, the second game was one of the best additions to that. But yeah, hey man, do whatever you like. Um, But yeah, this guy wants elf titties, but 
There's no reference to that at all whatsoever in the source material. So again, you just would have been using Lord of the Rings in name only. But no, this is very much the same vibe Jackson presented in his trilogy, a family-friendly spectacle with PG-13 rated violence, except for a blood splatter on the camera, which was a little bit fucking weird, but okay. Even though Amazon spent $250 million on the rights and then another billion dollars to make this thing that you're just blindly defending, terrific, fantastic. Uh, the Tolkien estate was never going to say, go ahead, it's yours. Oh, no, actually, uh, Professor Tolkien's grandkids, okay, not his son, who stayed until his last fucking dying breath to defend the legacy of his father. He would have totally put the kibosh on this stuff, and as soon as the man drew his final fucking breath, Amazon is like, all right, fire up the hacks, we got a series to write. Yeah, go ahead, it's all yours. Turn it into Euphoria, which is just an underage uh, sex, drugs, and I don't know, the hip-hop fucking gimmick, okay, that nobody watches on HBO. Like, it gets a lot of coverage, fucking degeneracy, but whatever. Oh, uh, with pointy ears, for all we care. There are some obvious tonal changes between the film and the TV versions films were good and they'll stand the test of time and this will just as soon as it's done on its run nobody will fucking give a shit about it of course another modern development is something even uh, jackson never had to face 20 years ago fierce social media debate and a whole other type of troll to the one tolkien imagined oh my god it's social media what do people on twitter have to say hmm it's almost like it's almost like it was when the Peter Jackson films were coming out, it's almost like there was an internet forum called like the one ring.net where a bunch of people were talking about the stuff back and forth. And they were very critical about some of the casting decisions at the time. But no, of course, why make something good? Because people on Twitter will criticize it. That's a way to live your life under the thumb of what other people also have to say about something that um, they can either watch or not watch. Wow, great way to live your life. Some ringers are apparently upset that their beloved character, Galadriel, oh, you know, <laughs> the eternal elf played by Kate Blanchett in the movies, yes, has been turned into Xena, Warrior Princess-esque badass in the series. Nice 90s reference, okay. No, it's just a trope at this point of the strong, independent female. Everybody's just kind of fucking tired of it, especially when you had such a beloved character who was strong in a different sense, and instead of telling a different story with, mm, I don't know, one of the male warrior elves, you just decided to make your ham-fisted feminist allegory. At this point, it is worth remembering that Tolkien himself called, er, called the book's most ardent admirers his deplorable cultists. Oh wow, the trend continues of some very out-of-context quotes. How adorable. And then there's the morons who, like the casting of Steve Toussaint as uh, Lord Chorus Valerian in HBO's Game of Thrones prequel, uh, House of Dragons. Yeah, um, and again, I've never watched Game of Thrones or anything like that, but uh, as far as I know, the Valerians are supposed to be, like, the uh, really white people. But again, it was just a race swap because shit only goes in one fucking direction and if it would have gone the other way. Like, Ryan Gosling is going to be the fucking T'Challa in the new Black Panther film. Don't think that's going to end up going all that well. But no, that's another thing, right? I'm sure all of the media outlets that were out there was like, oh my god, just wait, you guys, just uh, wait to release, uh, wait for all of the review bombing for House of the Dragon. And then after the f show comes out and people were like, yeah, it's actually not that bad. Then all of the editor's rooms were like, fuck, what do we do with all this shit? We just gotta, nobody's fucking complaining about it. Yeah, it's almost like people watch this shit, and if it's good, they'll praise it, and if they don't, well, then they'll voice their opinions on it. And I haven't heard one goddamn thing of uh, people saying that that uh, Corliss Valerian character is uh, not good. Oh, okay, cool. So, again, you just needed to throw that in there, because I already had it written down for another fucking article, and I need to repurpose it somehow. Uh, yes, there is something quite predictable nowadays about turning female characters into action heroes. Wow, you actually recognize that, and you wonder why people are mad at this shit? Uh, but isn't that better than the alternative? No, no. Tell a different story if you think that one would be bland, okay? Use the actual characters. There's only like over 700 that Tolkien wrote. Or just tell your own fucking story. How about that? No, 
no, we just need to make changes because people know the name Galadriel and people like the Lord of the Rings. Therefore, we have a built-in fan base that we can milk. And then, no wonder why, off in amazement, while people don't like the product that we put out there because, yes, we tell you that this is a, the Lord of the Rings story. And then, once they see something on screen, it's like, that doesn't comport to anything that's out there. Why did you tell us that this would be an adaptation of the appendices? Okay, why would it be drawing inspiration? There's n n nothing here to be fucking drawn from shut up you're all racists you don't like it because you're dumb but in the last in the fucking line here because this guy's just a total hack uh, the tolkien geeks and racists are clearly finding things to moan about just like hbo's rival fantasy series house of the dragon Nobody's complaining about that. Like, you take a look at the reviews that are out there, and they're pretty much in line with what the critics are saying. And it, it's one of those weird circumstances where the critics and the audience score is uh, pretty much identical. Okay, most of the places people are saying it's like a 6 up to an 8, depending on what kind of skewed 10-point scale you want to use, because some people just say that 7 is average, and you're retarded for doing that. Five's the fucking average. Just did fucking no numbers, stupid. But no, nobody's really complaining. They're just saying that, hey man, House of, the, House of the Dragon is surprisingly good. Don't really want to give it a full-throated endorsement at this point, because again, it could be a season eight type scenario. But no, so far, so good. Okay, all the way up to, yeah, it's actually pretty good. One of the best shows that's on TV right now. And you're not getting that with lord of the rings rings of power right now okay but again anybody who is against it is either just simply a purist a racist or maybe some mix of the two which is exactly where elon musk comes in on this one and boy is this motherfucker getting some traction on this okay he just had this okay no reference to anything else okay just absolutely drops this bomb right here tolkien is turning in his grave almost every male character so far is a coward a jerk or both only galadriel is brave smart and nice and again i've heard some reviews and watched a whole bunch of stuff and she's not even all that nice she sure is brave she sure is smart and everybody else is factually and functionally retarded and then yeah no and then he'll just throw in his little twitter jabs because his lawsuit should be coming up to court here pretty soon but 90 percent of my comments are boss yeah just a whole bunch of jack ma pictures which is kind of fucking weird but hey man whatever and jack Posobic with a really good fucking jab in there the uk can use tolkien's coffin uh to stay warm this winter yeah because they're shutting off all of their fucking energy reserves because they're really smart and going to green energy which is kind of just a nice ironic twist on things okay uh, elon musk critiquing tolkien who wrote that uh, story okay the lord of the rings the middle earth saga or whatever the fuck it's properly called i'm like i've never watched i've never read any of the you know source material and stuff i'm just going on what i've seen from people that i trust reviewing this stuff okay uh, the lord of, yeah the middle earth stuff okay was all written as an allegory as an anti-industrial revolution tale which is kind of funny when you take into proper context uh, Jack Posobiec's tweet. So yeah, nobody likes this fucking dog shit, and it's gonna be funny as fuck to continue to dunk on it, okay? So yeah, watch if you dare, critique if you must, or just laugh along with the rest. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.